Okay, to be mindful of time, we're gonna get started uh, right away. Everything I'm saying, I'm gonna be putting in the chat as well. So if you missed anything, uh, you can always access that information there. Welcome, Texas Association for College and Mission Counseling. Super happy to have you here virtually. Just a few things I wanna note before we get started with the different institutions. Your camera, <clears throat> your camera and microphone are off. So our panelists cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, you have to use the Q&A button that's either at the top or bottom of your screen. That Q&A is the only way you can ask a question during this 45 minute session. You can sign up for more sessions, the same place that you signed up for this one. And a recording of this is available on our website and will be pushed out, of course, to our panelists themselves and to anyone who registered for this as well. All right, and with that, we're I can get my screen to stop sharing. We are going to kick it off with Bishop's University. Thanks, Christy, and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Saad. I'm a recruitment and admissions officer from Bishop's University. I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what Bishop's is about, how it contributes to the liberal education model, and then I'll take any questions at the towards the end. Uh, so, Bishop's University is a small undergraduate university in Sherbrooke, Quebec, uh, really, really close to the Vermont, New Hampshire border. Um, it, it, it was founded in 1843, which makes the university older than Canada itself. It is an English language university. So even though we're located in the French province of Quebec, you don't need to know any French to be able to go to school here. Uh, our total student population is just shy of 3000 students. 75% uh, of those come from different parts of Canada, whereas the remaining 25% come from outside of Canada, from over 80 different countries, and 97% of the students live within walking distance to campus. Uh, this is Bishops just in terms of some numbers, so we have over 600 exchange opportunities. Uh, our student to faculty ratio is 24 to 1, we produce 15 Rhodes Scholars, our average class size in first and second year is 40. Uh, and we've spent over 200 million campus renovations over the last 10 years. Uh, this is just where the geographical location of Bishop. So it's about an hour and a half from Montreal, two hours from Quebec City, three and a half hours from Ottawa, four hours from Boston, seven hours from Toronto, and eight hours from New York City. Uh, these are all driving times. And a fun fact is that Bishop's is the closest Canadian university by car to both Boston and New York City. Uh, these are the six disciplines. Bishops offers over 100 different programs, and mainly these six disciplines are the School of Social Sciences, the School of Education, Natural Sciences and Mathematics, the School of Humanities, and the Williams School of Business. And we do uh, wholeheartedly uh, ascribe to a liberal education model, which means that we encourage students to ask questions, become confident in their abilities. Uh, generally, all universities in Canada uh, tend to ascribe to the same model. And what this means is that, for example, when I started at Bishops four years ago uh, in the politics program, I needed 48 credits to graduate with a degree in politics. But my full degree, however, was 120 credits. That meant that I had to take more courses outside of my major than what I had to do within my major to graduate. And so I ended up taking lots of courses in uh, various other things that I was interested in, psychology, history, religion, I ended up minoring in history. And that's what a liberal education model uh, and a liberal arts program allows you to do with that. You can tailor your degree through your electives, uh, depending on what you want, what you like, you can, you can focus more on, what you don't like, you can stray away from. And an interesting fact is that 70% of our graduates graduate from a different program than what they applied to when they applied to bishops. Uh, these are some of our admission requirements. Uh, so we require an overall average of 80% or a 3.5 uh, with five senior level grade 12 or equivalent academic courses, including English. Uh, if you're applying to the business program, we require one grade 12 level math course and applicants to science programs, uh, we require two grade 12 level science courses. Um, if you're from an IB program, we require a minimum predicted score of 30, uh, and people who score 30 or higher are eligible to receive uh, 30 advanced dating credits, which is equivalent to one full year of full-time study. Uh, that's, this is the total fee estimate for international citizens. Uh, so tuition, and this is all Canadian, but you can also see US dollars. 
Uh, so tuition and fees is somewhere around $27,000. Accommodation and meals, this includes your room and residence and a meal plan can cost somewhere around $10,000. Uh, books and supplies can cost somewhere around $1,300 uh, for an estimated total of $40,000. Canadian dollars or 32,000 US dollars. And these are some of our important dates and deadlines. So for uh, fall 2022 um, application deadline ends April 1st. So there is still time to apply for any uh, grade 12ers uh, listening to this, but generally for the next year, um, applications will open on August 1st. Uh, our competitive scholarships and awards and bursaries application deadline is March 1st. Uh, deadline for supporting documents for said scholarships and bursaries is March 15th. Um, June 15th is the residence application deadline. Um, yeah, and you can also book a private virtual tour. It's a great way to get to know the campus and see what it's about. Uh, it takes you through every single academic building and you can see the rooms you might be living in or you can see the dining hall and just the grounds. This is a picture of the quad, uh, which is a great area. Um, that we have at Bishops. So thank you so much for listening and uh, I'll pass it back to Christy. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up we have Uners, excuse me, University of Strathclyde in Scotland. Thanks Christy. Hi folks, a uh, very good evening to you all. Uh, so my name is Melissa Cunningham. I'm the Senior International Recruitment Officer at the University of Strathclyde, which is in Glasgow. Scotland. So let me just share my slide for you. There we go. Okay, so a little bit about the university itself then, some key facts. We are quite an old institution. We were founded 200 years ago at the end of the Scottish Enlightenment and founded as a place for useful learning. So meaning that uh, students can take the skill set that they learn at our institution right into the working world. We're a large institution of over 23,000 students from over 100 different countries. And you'll see here some of the accolades that we have won over the years. We are very proud to have won UK University of the Year in 2019, as well as Scottish University of the Year in 2020. We're very proud of being fit in the UK for student satisfaction. So this goes to certain points related to um, excellence in teaching, research and student experience. And we're winner of the Queen's Anniversary Prize twice now, which is the most prestigious prize in the education sector in the UK. We have 24 subjects that are ranked top 10 in the UK as well. So where we're located, we're in Glasgow, Scotland. Glasgow is the biggest city in Scotland. Scotland itself is a population of 5.3 million. In Glasgow, it's around about 1 million. Lots to do in Glasgow, as you can imagine. If you're into music, we're a UNESCO city of music. We have world-class shopping. Um, we have lots of different sporting events that happen here as well over the years. Most recent are the Commonwealth Games and the European Championships a few years ago. And we have great transportation links as well. We're a 45 minute train or bus ride from Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland. And we're a one hour flight from London. But if you like the scenic route, four and a half hours by train from London. So very accessible in um, the city of Glasgow is, um, as well as being um, easy to, to travel to as well from Texas. The university itself is a self-contained campus, you can see here, it's all in the one area, and it's situated in the downtown area of Glasgow. So a five to 10 minute walk from all the amenities, the main bus and train stations. And this is a great thing for students as well. It's a very safe environment in which to be in. Some photographs here, so you can see some of our art galleries, really nice Gothic and Victorian architecture, some lovely green spaces, and the mad kind of spaceship-esque building is actually our hydro. It's uh, one of the biggest music venues in the world. It's second to Madison Square Garden in terms of ticket sales, which is a, a cool fun fact. This is the university itself. So again, quite self-contained with different style buildings. We've renovated and refurbished our buildings in recent years. We've invested over one billion pounds into the regeneration of our facilities in the past uh, 10 years. We have four faculties, so we have our business school and engineering, humanities and social sciences, 
and sciences. And obviously for the purpose of this webinar, we're going to talk about liberal arts or humanities and social sciences. I do have a colleague here as well from the University of Aberdeen, and she will also talk about the Scottish degree structure. It is important to note that we had a four year degree structure in Scotland. In the rest of the UK, it's three years. Um, the US system is actually modelled in the Scottish system. And it means the four year degree structure is there's lots of flexibility and breadth of study. Certainly at Strathclyde, we have over 200 degree combinations, no general ed, so you choose the subjects that you want to choose, that you want to study. And within our liberal arts programmes, we have opportunities for placement for studying abroad at one of our partner institutions in Europe, in the US, North America, in Asia, all over the world. Some popular subject combinations from our US students are English and creative writing, journalism, media and communications, IR and politics, psychology and social policy. So you'll see here in the first year at Strathclyde, you study three subjects from humanities and social subjects. You whittle that down to two subjects in year two. And then after year two, you decide what you want to major in, whether that will be one subject or that will be two, that being your double major. We're top 10 in the UK for pretty much most of our programmes within liberal arts, social humanities and social sciences. Fifth here for English, you can see, first in the UK for communications and media, second for social work, the list goes on. So at Strathclyde, we have an excellent, excellent reputation for our liberal arts programmes. Very quickly now, how to make the how to apply to us. You can apply through the UK application system, which is UCAS. We have test flexible entry criteria here at Strathclyde. Tuition fees, roughly $22,000 to $31,000 per year. We do have partial scholarships available each year. And certainly, certainly Glasgow is one of the cheaper cities in which to live in the UK. Our rent prices are about half that. Um, compared to London prices, for example. We offer lots of different support services at Strathclyde and international student support. We, of course, have on-campus housing for our international students in their first year, and lots of sports clubs and society as well um, for students to have fun, um, as well as their academics at university. I'll pop my contact details into the chat, um, and if you've got any questions as well, feel free to follow up with me later on. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll pass on to my next colleague. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have University of Roehampton. Thank you so much, Christy, and thanks everyone for being here. Um, to listen to us tonight. So I'm Amanda Lundberg and I am an international officer with the University of Roehampton in London. So we're carrying on throughout the UK now. Um, as you can hear, I'm from the US, but I did live in London myself for 12 years. And I'm really excited to share with you a little more about why you should choose Roehampton. So London being the capital of England, uh, of course, um, but England um, itself is actually smaller than you might think. It's only the, a fifth of the size of Texas, where I currently reside and where I'm sure many of you are coming from now. Um, we have lots of airports, of course, which will connect you to all over the world, but you'll have amazing access to Europe as well. Um, some things to expect while living in the UK, lots of talking about the weather and football, of course. Um, drinking lots of tea, which is wonderful. It took me a year or so to get used to, but I love it now. Um, utter politeness, of course, and much, much better chocolate choices, of course, too. Um, and you can't forget having great humor um, at all times. <laughs> Um, but a little about Roehampton. So we're considered London's campus university, which is unique amongst London universities. We're situated on a beautiful 54 acre parkland setting. Um, we have been providing education for over 180 years now. And we were the first college of higher education in the UK to educate women, which we're really proud of. Uh, we've been ranked as the best modern university in London as well. So we have a very diverse student population. We have around 9,000 students, so kind of a medium size, um, of whom 28% are from outside of the UK and represent 145 nationalities. Um, we have 93% of our students that are either in further education or employment upon graduation, which we're proud of. Um, and we're very much a research-led institution. We were voted the most research-intensive modern university in the UK um, for the last couple of years. Um, and we've been recently ranked as second um, for student satisfaction amongst London universities as well. 
So our campus is lush and green, but of course, with the proximity to central London, you get kind of the best of both worlds, both city and nature. Um, we're just down the river, uh, Thames from London's popular tourist attractions, of course, um, very near Wimbledon and across from London's largest Royal Park, which is in Richmond. Um, public transportation in London is fantastic. You're not going to need a car while you're studying with us, um, but we also have a free university bus you can make use of along with the other um, overground lines, underground lines, um, and, and city buses as well. So our degrees, as my colleague just mentioned, um, are they're slightly different depending on where you're coming from. So um, we also have no GE requirements um, in, the, in England as well, um, but our degrees are three years long for undergraduate and one year for postgrad. So you could have two in the time it takes you to get one here. Um, but here you can see I've highlighted all of our liberal arts related programs. Um, however, I wanna point out that we have an actual liberal arts BA at Roehampton. It's brand new, it's starting this year. And in fact, we're one of a handful of universities in Greater London that offers this degree on its own. Um, so our liberal arts BA, is, it's a broad-based program that gives you freedom to study arts, uh, philosophy, ancient and modern history, literature, politics, sociology, journalism, and media. So a little bit of everything all in one course. Um, the structure balances breadth and depth and offers flexibility um, while you're do, you know, developing your research expertise as you, as you kind of develop your own areas of interest. Um, another thing to note here is that it does include an optional placement year if you wanted to take that, or you can do a work placement module as part of your degree as well. So lots of opportunity for liberal arts subjects. A little more about how to apply and what we're what we're looking for. Um, we are a completely test optional university. There's only a few subject areas that we look at relevant subject um, grades in those relevant subjects. Um, but otherwise, we look for we look at your GPA, um, and we also accept IB curriculum, of course. And you can transfer into year two or three as well. And applying is really simple. You can apply through UCAS, um, as my colleague mentioned, um, which is similar to the Common App, or you can apply. Um, online for free directly onto our website as well. Uh, we have rolling admissions, which means there's no hard deadlines. So you've got plenty of time to apply. We're still considering applications now. Um, and then you can also apply to start in either September, January, or April. We have three different intake periods. In terms of overall costs, it's very, uh, very affordable, especially considering we're saving a year with our bachelor's programs. Um, we have numerous scholarships here, and most of our U.S. students do utilize um, federal loans through FAFSA as well. And of course, support is of the utmost importance to us. So no matter what your needs, we're gonna be there to help you um, as you get, get along with your course. We offer learning supports as well as career and financial support. And um, we also have a medical center on campus too. And then accommodations, of course, on campus. So we guarantee housing for all of our international students. You can live on campus all three years or we can help you find um, housing off campus as well. Very affordable for London accommodation, especially. Um, all of our rooms are single occupancy and have a shared kitchen. And then you can choose whether to have your own private ensuite bathroom or to share with a couple of students as well. Save a little bit of money. A uh, little, just a little bit about college life. We've got lots going on on campus as you'd expect. Um, we have tons of societies, which are our clubs, um, lots of volunteering opportunities, sports, nightlife, um, lots of activities going on constantly. Um, but the thing to note here is the ethos at Roehampton, which is based on social justice and equality. We have absolutely a focus of putting everyone on an equal playing field. I just wanted to touch on the sports quickly so you can see what we've got to get involved with. Um, these are our competitive sports, but you can also play socially or for fun and you don't need to have previous experience to play any of these. Um, however, if you're a soccer player, if you, play, if you want to play English football, let me know, because um, we have a fantastic opportunity where you can train with um, one of the Premier League um, professional teams um, whilst you're getting your degree with us. But thank you for your time today. Feel free to scan any of these QR codes to learn a little more about University of Roehampton, um, but please get in touch if you have any questions at all. And thanks again, and good luck with your college search. All right, thank you, Amanda. Uh, next up, we have Berto Education. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Cherie Davis. I am the regional representative for Berto Education, representing the Texas region. And um, I cannot not find the play. <laughs> All right. So here's my presentation. Can I hope everybody can see it? <clears throat> So virtual education is actually a study abroad program for your first year of college. So our goal is to help you start college abroad and then connect you with a um, 
college admissions application once you complete our program. You can either do one year or one semester, and our locations are England, Italy, Spain, Costa Rica, and we've actually added Argentina, Ireland, and the Czech Republic recently. So our goal is to help you um, become more of a global citizen and to explore the world and to have more than just a typical maybe tourist experience while you're studying abroad. Obviously, you're going to have a very much more in-depth rich experience through your study abroad than you would through other travel opportunities. And we we do it during your first year of, of college, which is a little bit unique. But we do take the academic part seriously, um, but we focus on more um, experiential, discussion-based um, group projects, that type of thing. You, there's not gonna be a lot of lectures and, and testing as much as more of the experiential and um, project-based learning. Um, you do have access to faculty. We have um, faculty, academic success coaches, and student life coordinators that make up your care team if you are a student with us. And also, we just think that study abroad is a very, um, very important part of any student's experience. Um, what, no matter what you do, one thing I would encourage you to look at is if there's an opportunity to study abroad with whatever university you do decide to study in, even if you do go or if you choose to go to one of these awesome um, abroad colleges, that would be fantastic. I wish I could have done something like that. So uh, we do, like I mentioned, focus on a lot of experiential learning. We have um, volunteer service opportunities ingrained into our programs as well um, as some outdoor adventure, some um, you know extra travel while you are in your program, depending on where you go. And how does this work is um, we do have a rolling admissions. So we accept applications on an ongoing basis. It is a free application, free non-binding application. We do not need SAT or ACT scores. Um, you can complete your application on our website for free um, and just submit a 500 word writing sample in your high school transcript. Um, we will get back with you within 48 hours and we will then talk, start talking to you about the partner college process. Just, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, once you're accepted and we know what college you're going to afterwards, then you can join us and complete one or two semesters and earn up to 32 college credit hours in your first year um, and then transfer those to your college of choice. So when you finish your program, you'll be a second semester freshman or first semester um, sophomore at your college of choice. Um, we do have about 70 partner colleges. Um, the full list is on our website. I will also mention that we do have a, our primary um, college of record is the Richard Lane College of William and Mary. So you will have a transcript from that college and that will transfer anywhere you wanna go. If you, so that means even if you don't want to choose a partner college, we can still work with you and help you get into the college of your choice. But our partner colleges, they're already familiar with the Verto. Um, they already have that relationship with us and they understand how our courses work, how our curriculum works and how courses will transfer into their program. Um, so it's just a little bit more about that. And as I mentioned, even if you already know where you wanna go, you've already been accepted somewhere um, or you haven't figured it out yet, you're not sure you wanna do a partner college, that's fine too. Um, we do match you with a college counselor and that person um, helps you navigate through that. So you can do a freshman year abroad, even if you haven't chosen your college yet. And we try to help you get to there by the time you finish our program. So we do offer financial aid and we also do list our costs on the website. Um, it's our cost depend on, it does depend on location. It varies by location. So it's anywhere from 18,000 to 25,000. And that in, includes your housing, um, meals, tuition, um, everything except your flight there, visa fees, and any, um, you know, extra uh, either travel that you want to do on your own, like weekends, your free time, that type of thing. Um, but we do include, in addition to um, the cost of the program itself, we do have a suggestion for a budget um, that we share with you. So you'll know how to be financially prepared if you want to do something like this. Um, we also offer the virtual opportunity grant, which is up to twelve thousand um, dollars. It is based on need. We have a uh, we do have some leadership and honors um, scholarships available as well. 
Um, and we also have financial aid advisors to support you. And um, our goal is just to make it as, as affordable and inclusive as possible. We know it is costly to study abroad, but that's why we have the Verto Fund, we have what we call the Verto Fund, so that we can raise some money um, to help students who want to have this experience. So I already talked about how to apply, but it's very quick application, It'll only take you a few minutes, test optional, 2.5 or higher GPA. Um, and what we do is we reach out, we do an interview with you, with your family, um, and talk to you more about that process, what it looks like. Um, we review your, your writing sample. Um, and then once you're accepted, you submit a deposit and that counts as your enrollment. Um, if you have any additional, if you wanna follow us on our Instagram, our TikTok, it, our students there are very involved. Um, one of our programs that we have is called the Trailblazers Program. And that is an internship for our students where they actually are involved in helping us with our social media. So a lot of that content is created by students and it's also, um, also helps them with, uh, they get a stipend for that. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. I will pop my email into the chat. Um, we also have our website there and we will be having a virtual open house this Friday. Um, and also we have early enrollment discount until this Friday, $500 off your overall um, enrollment if you um, apply and are accepted by them. Um, but that's opportunity for you to check out. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of Aberdeen. Hi there, everyone. Um, so I'll just quickly introduce myself. My name is Frances McBean, and I am the International uh, Recruitment Officer and uh, based, obviously, up in Aberdeen, as you can tell by my wee Scottish accent. Um, so I'll just give you a really quick introduction to Aberdeen and then go into uh, various different things about the university. So we are located um, obviously in the northeast of Scotland um, and we've just highlighted it there on the map just to pinpoint exactly where we are. Um, just one thing a lot of people think is that Aberdeen is the very top of Scotland and there's nothing else above us but as you can see there is actually a lot more to Scotland above us so we're not miles away from the central belt which is where um, Glasgow and Edinburgh are based so we're about, um, about two and a half to three hours drive from each of those cities in the centre of Scotland. We do have an international airport with direct flights um, to London and Amsterdam and we also have a train station in the heart of the city centre. So we were founded in 1495 so we are the third oldest university in Scotland and the fifth oldest university in the English-speaking world um, so we're one of the ancient universities. Um, we have about 130 nationalities that make our student body and our students um, on campus. We have about 15,000 students. So we are classified as a medium sized university within Scotland. We have over 350 degree programmes um, and we were in the top 20 universities in the UK, according to the Guardian University Guide. And we're also ranked as the third safest university um, city in the UK. So Scotland isn't all that bad. I can assure you it's definitely a safe place to live. Um, in terms of courses and sort of degrees that we have on offer, the university um, houses 12 schools and they're all listed here. I obviously won't name all of them because I'll be here a wee while, um, but you can see that we do have a lot of art-based um, degree areas. So for example, um, the School of Divinity, History and Philosophy, um, we have a lot of different degrees within that, also education, language, literature um, and social sciences, as well as quite a popular course, uh, popular school that has many different degrees within it. Our main campus is located in the historic district of Old Aberdeen. So um, back in 1495, when the university was found, um, it was actually a very small area within what was sort of not actually known as Aberdeen. And as the university grew, the city then grew with it. Um, so we're located in the old area, which is really nice because we have a lot of old buildings, really nice old cobbled streets um, and old stone cottages and things like that on campus, which are just homes to the general public um, of Aberdeen. So it's a really, really nice campus. We are located all together. Um, so it's not a sort of a, a university that's spread across the city, all of our um, buildings are within one area. That is unless you study any of our medical science degrees because um, they are based up at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, which is the city's hospital. But any other subjects will be based at our main campus. 
We also have our Sir Duncan Rice Library, which was built in 2012. So this is a slightly more modern facility. Um, and we also have our sports facilities, which are located just a short two minute walk from the main campus. And this house is um, sort of two halves of it. One half is the aquatic side, which has Olympic standard diving board area and swimming pool. Um, and then we also have the athletic side of it. So you've got things like an indoor and outdoor athletics track, squash courts, tennis um, courts, trampolining, specialist weight areas, um, a state-of-the-art gym as well. So that's a really nice facility that students have access to. And you can actually get a membership for about £16 per month, which is very cheap when you compare it to other private gyms within the city. Um, and in terms of our accommodation, this is based between about £90 to £150 per week, depending on what spec you go for. We offer both catered and self-catered. Um, all bedrooms are private, so you never share a bedroom with anyone. You might just share your bathroom. But we do also have ensuite options. So if you prefer to have your own private bathroom in your bedroom, then you can choose the ensuite. We offer quiet and alcohol-free blocks. Um, and there's a central building which houses our restaurant, socialising spaces and also a small convenience store as well, which is really handy for students. There's regular socialising activities and events that take place in the central building. So a lot of things during the first week of term to get students settled in and to meet new friends. Um, and we also have 24 hour a day, seven day a week security on campus. And we also have sabbatical officers as well. So if you ever need to speak to anyone, the support is there for you, no matter what time of day um, you ever require any assistance. In terms of our entry requirements, the main one that we'll be focusing on will obviously be the MA, which stands for the Bachelor of Arts. Um, so they've got listed here um, the entry requirements. I've also popped on um, science degrees as well, but obviously for this presentation, it won't be massively um, the focus. And then you can also check all of our entry requirements on our website. So should you um, need to double check anything, you can just simply go on, search for um, entry requirements and it pulls up entry requirements for different countries, all listed nice and easy there for you. We will be test optional for entry in 2022 and it will be reviewed for 2023. So it's not guaranteed, but you can again just keep an eye on our website. And in terms of um, application, as um, a couple of colleagues have mentioned, for the UK-based universities, we both accept UCAS and Common App. And we do also um, accept financial aid as well. In terms of our tuition fees, these are um, sort of range between £17,000 up to £41,000 um, per year. And we do also have a North American scholarship and an excellence award for students starting in September 2022. And this will most likely be reviewed again moving forward for 23 entry. And this is where students are um, given a £2,000 tuition fee discount every year um, for their four years of study at Aberdeen. Um, so I'll just quickly sort of recap again what Melissa was saying um, regarding the four year degree structure in Scotland. So all of our degrees are four years. Um, and again, you will have the flexibility in your first and second year, which is quite nice. And then you can really focus in on your area of interest for your third and fourth year. So just life around the city, just to give you a little bit more information. We're not a massive city. Um, we are uh, the third biggest city in Scotland. So we have a population of about 200,000 people. Um, but you notice that because the university plays quite a big role within the city and the population is quite big, um, that we also have um, a lot of young people within the university, but also within the city. We are also milder than you might think. So the average temperature in the winter is about four degrees Celsius and in the summer about 18 degrees Celsius. But this week, uh, all of Scotland's actually had lovely weather. <laughs> um, so we've, we've definitely been having an early summer um, temperatures at the moment. And we have everything that you would expect a city to have. So restaurants, cafes, bars. We've got Pitodry Football Stadium, just a stone's throw away from the campus. Um, and a beach, which is just a 10 minute walk away from the campus as well. And I've just highlighted here to quickly finish up a few wee things that might be of interest to you, depending on what sort of lifestyle you'd be looking for uh, for your free time. So there's 260 castles in Aberdeenshire that you can visit. The Cairngorm National Park is just a short one hour drive away. There's frequent buses and trains all around the city and surrounding areas. However, Aberdeen is very easy to walk um, across as it's not a massive city. 
and we have 130 miles of coastline and beaches to visit, which is just lovely. And here are some of the images just of the first ones on campus and then the other two is of a local fishing village, which is 15 minutes south of Aberdeen called Stonehaven. So a lot of our students will actually go and visit this because it's really, um, as you can see, quite spectacular. And here are my details, so please feel free to get in touch if you do have any questions, um, but I'll pop my email address into the chat box as well at the end, just so you can have that for future reference, but thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Um, so if I could ask everyone to have their camera on, we're going to go in the same order that we presented. If you could answer the question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, thanks, Christy. Uh, from my perspective, and I realize that this is partial to the school that I'm going to, but uh, my advice would be to not rule out the smaller schools, because from my experience, when I went to, in 2017, I, I actually started at a big school in Toronto, Ontario, uh, and I just felt out of place, the classes were too big, um, I never had that connection with, with uh, my professors, or never really made any real connections on campus, uh, and that's how I found out about bishops because I started researching for smaller schools and I really found that at bishops, uh, you know, I was able to make that connection with my professors and which is handy, not just going through going through school, but when you're graduating, uh, professors are able to reference you for jobs or you never know what that really personal uh, reference letter can do for your grad school application. Um, so that, that would be my advice. Um, I would say for just on a maybe a more practical um, level in terms of your actual research, I guess we're, we're so um, used to the access to the virtual world now, but of course, if, if you can physically get over to, um, to visit the, the campus, sorry, I'm thinking about a UK perspective here, but this is obviously, you know, um, visiting any campus, even in the US, but have a look on the university social media. Um, there's so much that goes on in terms of all the different social media platforms, lots of student testimonials. You quite often get a sense of um, the student life as well. Um, certainly at Strathclyde as well, we have students who will show you around campus and will take you around the city as well. So um, as I say, I think that's quite good just to get kind of feel, especially for a place if, you've, if you're not able to go or, or if you've never, and visited before. Yeah, and I, I would totally agree with both of those. Those are both great pieces of advice. Um, I would just add to contact one of us because we're, we're here as a resource to you. Um, we're here to answer your questions, whether it's what kind of food am I going to find in that particular city or you know what the course is like. Um, many of us either currently live in the countries that our universities are based or, or have done. So we, you know, we can speak to living in these places and having, you know, being on campus and what, what all of that is like, and, and also to be able to connect you with current students um, and see what that current um, student experience is like as well. So that'd be my biggest piece of advice. I didn't have anybody to talk to when I was going through this process. So I'd say, get in touch with us, ask your questions. <laughs> Yeah, very similarly, I was going to say definitely feel free to reach out to any of us um, and you know the, the virtual open house like virtual is having probably all of these other schools are also having virtual it'd be great if you could go in person, but if not at least do a virtual event um, and sometimes there are alumni or current students also at those events it's very important to talk to some current students if you can it's a it's an overwhelming process um it's it can be daunting um i don't think you're going to get it wrong that's that's another thing i will say you are not going to get it wrong it's going to be okay um and i would probably just advise to give yourself plenty of time um no matter what university you're applying to it's a long process and um, but obviously if it is international that you're thinking then it's even longer there's more hoops to jump through unfortunately so yeah give yourself plenty of time and sort of just mirroring a few um points that other people said like we are starting well at least um my, myself and melissa will be traveling soon to the states so if you are aware of us putting out things on social media that we're there in country and you want to meet with us you can get in touch and we're happy to to do that now um, and again just um, yeah check out social media because it's a really good way to get a feel for the university um, and the student body as well so 
but definitely my suggestion give yourself plenty of time do not leave this to last minute you'll definitely regret it if you do um, so yeah all right all great pieces of advice uh i think i always try to add something if there's something not covered i think the biggest thing is to contact you folks so a lot of folks said you know they didn't have someone to talk to or they weren't really sure well here are the experts so if you're watching this live or you're watching this remote uh, you're able to access their contact information give them a ring an email a text whatever it is that their contact information uh, implies and find out more because again it's their job to find the right fit for you and to see if it is the right place for you so that's always what i like to add and just really thank you so much to our panelists here uh thanks so much for the people watching this live if you are watching this live there is a survey that you can take uh if you are watching uh this remote or live sign up for more sessions the same place that you signed up for this one or watch sessions in the same place as well and a recording is available at the link provided that is also in the chat uh, with that i just want to thank again our panelists for being here and uh talking about their amazing institutions and i hope everyone out there watching this finds the right place for them i know you will it is a process but you are already started if you're watching this and going through it so with that I bid you farewell and I hope you have a fantastic night. Take care.